So, hello everybody. I'm Nick James. I'm uh, an oncologist based at the Royal Marsden Hospital in London. Um, today we're joined by Andy, who's very kindly agreed to um, share his experiences of having chemotherapy. So, to start, Andy, can you introduce yourself as well and, um, it, and tell us a little bit about when you were diagnosed and how you came to have chemo? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, my name is Andy. Um, I'm now 59 years old. I was diagnosed when I was 57. Um, I, I was having some waterworks issues. As they say, in summer of 2021, I was either peeing more often or I was going into retention, which was very painful. Um, being probably a fairly classic stoic male, I just kind of put it down to it will clear up, it will go away. And when it didn't, um, I thought, well, I've got an infection. My wife told me to go to the to the GP, which I did in about September time. Um, it was quite clear when the when there wasn't an infection that, that that there was something more sinister. So while my GP didn't say the words, um, she, I could just tell by her manner that something was very serious, and, and I was kind of in denial at that point. Um, I was seen very quickly. Well, she did a DRE. Mm -hmm. uh, and a manner changed and I kind of thought well okay it's it sounds like this is what it's going to be but I, I didn't want to accept that at the time um I did then I was fast tracked through in, with the two weeks and um was sent to the urology department where I was sent for an MRI um and at that point it it that came back that um I did have prostate cancer wow. um I was having a bone scan at the at, at the time and my kidneys um, started to pack up a bit and I was hospitalized. Um, and at that point, um, I was put on hormone therapy. Um, I wasn't really told why, but I, you know, I just, I was kind of prepared to, to do anything that I was told at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got to see um, an, an oncologist and um it was very clear then that things were not good it was very aggressive and it had spread um to my lymph nodes so um i was told it was incurable at that point and it was very hard to take it all in um and trying to process it but i i do remember him saying that i had significant cancer and um the words i won't I won't forget very easily. Um, and I was told that I had a treatment path that I had no choice in and that I had to have um, the hormone therapy, which I'd started, and I had to have chemotherapy. That was the very first um, step. And and with the hormone therapy, um, th this is just the injections every three months or whatever that you're on. Is that right? Yes, I was on bicalutamide for the first four weeks. Yeah. And then I started, um, they didn't agree with me at all, really. Um, but I was, then I went on to, I think after the, after two weeks of being on bicalutamide, um, I was then had my, I think I had my first injection of Zolidex. Yeah. The, the hormones. And I now have that every three months. Mm -hmm. I'm, st I'm still having that now. Okay. And, and the disease it was just in the lymph glands, not in the bones as well. Is that right? Um, no, so far it's just in the, um, it's just in my lymph nodes. It had traveled to local lymph nodes, but also one higher up, unfortunately, um, which hasn't been treated. But um, so far, it seems that it hasn't gone to my bones, which is obviously good for me. And did they give you radiotherapy as well? Yes, they did. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had to have my three or four months of chemotherapy and then I got a month off to recover. And then I had 23 sessions of uh, okay. radiotherapy at Mount Vernon. Um, and then a week um, off from that, and then I had brachytherapy. All right, okay. So, so they, they hit me with they hit me with a lot of treatment. Throwing the works at you, yeah. Okay. Yes. So, um, so obviously that yeah, the chemotherapy is only a part of a more complex bit of yes. really, um, which is so. So just I guess just focusing on the chemotherapy for now. What what were your thoughts when your consultant said you needed chemo? I mean, it sounds like he he said you've got no choice. So. 
that that's quite an interesting way of putting it in the first place. So I'm, I suspect did he say that? Did he actually say that? I, well, I think he said that look, we need to start you on chemotherapy, and and I was still processing the fact that I yeah. had cancer, yes. and and I just remember being completely. Uh, he yeah. commented that I kind of glazed over and was, was trying to take it in. Luckily, my luck, my wife was there who was taking notes because. Yeah. Uh, you know I, I wasn't really in the room but I, I remember my reaction uh, which I look back and laugh and just saying well, well I don't want chemotherapy it, you know it, it was as terrifying a, um, a word as as cancer was to me I didn't really know too much about it but I knew that it wasn't a good thing and um, I kind of I kind of realized that it it it, it it was making it clear that my cancer was probably worse than I'd hoped because I knew that you have ke chemotherapy um in quite often the, the the worst cases or where it's spread and uh, so that my reaction was well i don't want it and he said well this is what you've got to have um it wasn't it wasn't really uh, it wasn't really given as a, as a choice um for me that's how it felt but it you know it was okay um and i look back and think my treatment path was correct but that's how it was i felt at the time that it, it was you know, it, it, I was told that this is what you've got to do to, um, you know, as part of a treatment path, which yeah. he didn't go into um, because he said I was obviously struggling just to take in the chemotherapy part. Um, but uh, yeah, that's okay. And and did you? Um, this must have been during COVID or peri COVID. It was. It was. Yeah, which made it made it a little bit more interesting. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, so you obviously said you obviously did find it scary. So what was it that, I mean, there's two aspects to why you're finding it scary. One is because it's a measure of seriousness. So I can see that that's scary. Mm. But it sounds like you were also not happy with it in terms of the treatment itself. You didn't, you, you what were your fears about chemotherapy in terms of the process? That... I, d I think it was, um, I, 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 as I said, I didn't know much about it. I was quite naive. I've learned a huge amount about it, about it now. Yeah. Um, but I just thought that that people that had chemotherapy or how that's portrayed, you know, when you hear about it or or see it on TV, it's it's not good. It, it can have it can have sort of bad side effects, and quite often those can be irreversible. So mm -hmm. I thought that I was going, you know, I was going to have a basically quite a toxic treatment that I knew would obviously mm. helped me um, combat or help manage my cancer but um it, it was just that fear of what it was going to do to me um and that unknown and also i guess feeling a bit out of control that yeah. i was going to be having something put into my veins um you know with infusion and and i didn't really know enough about it or understand enough about it but i just knew it was going to have some some bad effects. potentially bad um, yeah. side effects um, yeah, I think I mean what you just said is something I certainly quite commonly hear, um, and it's um, I think one of the things about you know people that you see on the media having chemo, obviously they might be having it for a range of different things, mostly not prostate cancer probably, and and often the reason people be will be looking bad who are on chemotherapy is because yeah you know, the disease itself is what's making them look bad. Mm. Um, as much as the treatment is and, and and obviously the less fit you are the worse the side effects are as well so one of the advantages of giving chemotherapy in the setting you had it nearly diagnosed is that you haven't had a lot of previous treatment and you, you've obviously got whatever disease burden you've got but actually that usually improves quite quickly just with the hormone therapy so it's kind of quite a good point at which to give you chemo Mm. You actually you know you look pretty fit obviously i've not met you in person but um you're actually in a good position to tolerate it rather than giving it as we previously used to as a relatively late treatment when you're not necessarily very fit yes he did say that he said that he was planning an aggressive treatment path because i you know he i appeared to be relatively fit yeah, and yeah. he thought that i would be able to take everything that he was going to throw at me so yes. that yeah coming back to your point i think yeah and did that i think help? he felt that he had lots of lots of range to throw things at me yes <laughs> yeah and did that help you accept it him saying that um i i didn't really accept it at all i think i think because i was it, it, i mean you know you get you get diagnosed and it throws 
your yeah. life into a bit of a tailspin and you feel isolated and all those classic things that when yeah, you're told yeah. you have you have cancer and then I think then your treatment path on top I remember saying to him I don't want chemotherapy but I'll, I'll have radiotherapy like like I knew what I was talking about I mean yeah. I look and I laugh that I I was saying what I'd have and what I wouldn't have but that's just sort of panicking about chemo um and I all the way up to you know having going in for my first treatment yeah. um you know I was still terrified um you know and I had a couple of nurses calming me down and they said but it was quite common so yeah I didn't I didn't really come to terms with it I think until until I'd had my first session yeah um, you and know I, it, was, it was difficult to get my head around really I'm sure yeah well yes it's this fear of the unknown isn't it I, and I assume you had six lots of chemo in the end did you is that right did you I did I had I had six six cycles um every three weeks yeah okay and um when you uh, you said about the nurses um how, having to calm you down the first one how after you'd had the first one how were the subsequent ones um much easier yeah I mean I, I was staggered actually I was very emotional and upset for the first one and, and they said yeah. that was pretty common yeah, um, sure yeah and I thought that oh my lord I'm going to have this for the next three or four months of of me being in an emotional state and mm. that wasn't good and they said, oh, you'll come in for the next one and you'll be fine. You know, you'll. And I said, I, I don't think so. But I did. And um, uh, and, and the second one, I, I just couldn't believe it that I, I kind of walked in and, and felt more in control because yeah. I got through those three weeks. They weren't great. Um, I'd had lots of different things happen to me in terms of side effects. But I thought, well, I've got through it. So this thing that was this unknown, this scary unknown, suddenly I thought, right, well, I know more about it. I know my body can take it. Um, and I was slightly concerned that obviously there could be a cumulative effect. Sure. Um, I went into the second one and, and and then the subsequent ones feeling that, you know, quite strong and in, and in control. And, and by the end, the sixth one actually was was just as emotional because I didn't want to leave the, cool. the lovely nurses and the comfort of having um this treatment which was basically helping me fight yes that, so, yeah, so it, cool. it, yeah, it, that, that, that was quite an emotional thing as well at the end it was kind of a weird thing because I didn't want to stop um, because my PSA was reducing and I didn't expect um that to happen it was a it was an it was an interesting journey actually mm, I'm sure I, I, that, that's quite common that sort of it even though the treatment is unpleasant not wanting to finish it because the, for the reason you just said mm. so what what side of, so you mentioned side effects what side effects did you get um i had a whole raft of things and, and what i did is well one of the bits of advice i got was to keep a diary okay um, because obviously the cycles yeah um, they can repeat themselves and you 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 can sort of get um an idea of what might be happening or if something happens to you you look you look it up from the previous mm. Um, cycle and you think oh that's okay because day four I felt I felt that way yeah. um so while I was having I was having um steroids um yeah. every day yeah um, I also then had to preload just before sure um each cycle to to help which I understood was to 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 help my body take yeah the the, the, the drugs it, yeah um, it, it, it's very effective at getting rid of nausea so before you yeah we had the chemo um sort of sickness prevention medicines that you will have had as a standard yeah you you would be feeling really quite sick whereas mm. actually people that mostly people are not sick at all on dose tax or um with you know given yeah in fact we, we, often we find we can reduce the anti-sickness quite considerably um Good. if you know some people are more if you like sicky than others but um it, it's uh yeah so it pretty much gets rid of sickness as a side effect which is a side effect that most people associate with chemo but actually i don't did you did you get sickness at all? no not really um no. i didn't um i got a little bit of it but i was given anti-sickness pills i think don peridone yeah. which i always called yeah. don perignon, perignon yeah. <laughs> unfortunately not quite as tasty yeah. um so i did have that but a bit but it, it affected my other end more and i had quite a lot of diarrhea yeah. um and um one minute i think i was constipated and then then i had diarrhea so that that was kind of an interesting journey i was very very tired um i had i had flu like symptoms this is all sort of you know as a journey as you go through the first week or two yeah um, 
so at different points, I I I I was I had flu-like symptoms. I got nosebleeds. Strangely, I'm I'm not quite sure why. I got I bled from my backside and had to go to A and E. Never really found out exactly what that was. Um, but I've never I'd never had that before. Um, I lost pretty much all of my hair uh, and my facial hair, which was interesting. I didn't shave for six months, so that was a that was a a positive, I guess. Um, I had I, I was using polybalm because I was told that my nails could could get damaged yes. through chemo, which makes sense as it's attacking the fast growing cells. So I use this thing called polybalm, which I put on three times a day on my toes and my fingers, and only one nail really got damaged. So that seemed to that seemed to to be good. It, it felt like I was doing something positive as well about it, um, um, and trying to fight the side effects. Uh, my cheeks would go very red straight after chemo, really glowing. Um, were hot um but that changed um after a day or so uh my pulse increased by about 15 beats a minute um i noticed that's quite um, a though, i imagine yeah yeah um because i wear a watch and, and so i noticed that my heart rate went up a went up a lot and i and i also got quite a lot of bad back pain um which made it very hard to sleep mm. uh, and um, that went after the chemo stopped, but I, I had to get a like a, a knee pillow because I couldn't sleep on my back. Um, but as soon as I got the knee pillow, I was, I was able to sleep on my side because sleep is so important, especially during the, oh, yeah, the yeah. chemo cycle. So I had a whole raft of um, sort of side effects, but keeping the diary was great because it enabled me to, to, to look back and, um, yeah. and see what's going on. I also bought a digital thermometer and took, took my temperature wow. three times a day and noted that as well because i know you have to stay stay within a range because of obviously the the the, the potential um threat of sepsis so so i kind of felt like i was doing things to keep on top of it and bring back some control um and did you I, um, yeah just ask a question about this the generally generally what i'll tell patients is that the side effects are going to be worst in the first week after the chemo and then will gradually subside um and things that the diarrhea and constipation is, is I agree, is a funny one. It, it, the reason you get that is the chemo causes diarrhea, but the anti sickness medicines cause constipation. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, so, so depending on which is predominating, you can get either or, as you said, describe both, <clears throat> which is a bit weird. Um. So, but in terms of the the chronology of it, was it the same each time? Pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it was pretty similar, mm -hmm. um, and I, there was a bit of cumulative effect. So I think by wow. cycle five, I, I, I was feeling, I guess, worse as, mm -hmm. as time went through, and then I was humming and hurrying about having the last one. Yeah, uh, but we agreed that yeah, I should absolutely complete the the course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, the day after I had chemotherapy was probably my best day, but that was probably because of all the hormone. Uh, sorry, all the um, steroids. Yeah. Steroids. So yeah. I was out on my, um, I was out on my bike the following day, sort of roaring around the countryside like a maniac. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking, this is great, you know, especially after my first session. I said, oh, I've yeah. got the hang of this chemo, and then I think day yeah. two I was, I was wiped out, and then I kind of had respect for it. Yeah, um, the you same get, thing each time. You get a bit of steroid withdrawal, actually, because as you rightly say, you get a massive slug of dexamethasone mm. chemo, which helps you not be sick. But um, uh, yeah, I've had one, one person to say that he has to sort of put a warning up on his social media before he has dexamethasone with his chemo because he says he gets really quite manic on it. And right. describe that you've got a bit manic in terms of you know going out on the bike, but then of course you it, yeah what goes up must come down, and you get the rebound the other way. So uh, exactly yeah, yeah. that and that's what <laughs> happened. Yeah, so I I struggled to sleep yeah. a bit on the steroids, but yeah. um you know I just took it day by day and 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 just that's you know that's how I managed it. Just thinking right today's another day, get through it. Yeah, you know, write down what's happening, the good and the bad, and then and then just. You know the, it, that helped me a bit actually. And did you um, uh, did you use any support services, counselors, nurses, GP, anything? Yeah, I did. I did when I was um, hospitalised when my kidneys kind of started packing up. Yeah, I got visited by a cancer nurse and mm -hmm. um, talked to me for about an hour about different about different things and aspects of 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 my diagnosis and potential treatment and. One of the things she did was she gave me numbers of two 
um, guys that ran support groups. And I just um, felt the need to phone them both up. And and uh, I'm really glad I did. It's probably one of the best things that I did. Mm -hmm. um, one of the guys um, ran a group called the Prostate Peddlers um, that, that was based not too far from me. Mm -hmm. and I spoke to him and, and it really helped. It helped me just sort of start to process it. This was somebody that had gone through it and was going through it. Um, and it really helped me come to terms with things. And um, I would then go and visit this guy and we'd have a chat. And and it helped me start to, start to become sort of more in control and, of, of my feelings and and, and managing to ha um, handle it. It, 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 it. it sort of got rid of this sort of sense of isolation, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people feel. That was really good. And I was also given another number of a guy that ran um, lots of different um, support groups and he was very experienced. Um, he was um, had uh, got a diagnosis of prostate cancer and he dedicated his life to to learning about it and mm. uh, had become quite a force and um, doing speeches and all kinds of other things. And, and yeah. I spoke to him and that really helped as well because he had a raft of knowledge and information. Um, and also these guys put me in touch with somebody that had gone through chemotherapy mm. that really helped actually because I spoke to him and it was just good to know that some you know you're speaking to somebody that's gone through it um, and come out the other side and and he yeah. talked to me about all sorts of things including the cold cap and 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 various other things so it was really useful speaking to a couple of people that that had gone through it so I did get support um, and and I think that that was incredibly useful for me I also got offered some counseling um, free counseling through Booper and Macmillan and and I did actually take that up because I just thought I don't want to keep going on and on, you know, uh, uh, to my wife about it. You know, it wasn't fair on her. She was struggling with it as well. So I yeah. did take that up. And I think that was very useful as well. It was just a, an hour out a week to to just sort of get things off my chest and talk things through. And so, yeah, yeah I did. I did. I did get support. And it obviously sounds like it helps you as well. And and, and talking to somebody who's been through it, uh, yeah, I often find it's out. And that's, of course, is why we're doing this video now. So, mm. um, the um, it, And you mentioned you were worried about long term side effects, you know, persisting after the chemotherapy. And have you actually had any? Have you had have you needed to make any lifestyle changes or anything because of the chemo? No, I haven't. No. Um and yeah. so that's yeah. and actually one of the things i'm quite evangelical about with my patients um is is stuff like exercise and you mentioned cycling so yeah. you, which i assumed you didn't just go out and buy a bike whilst you were high on steroids and you probably had the bike or you probably had <laughs> I think the my wife already. thought that i did to be fair <laughs> right. i did i did go out and get an e-bike because i knew that i would be um very tired yes and i thought well why not um also when you're diagnosed with something very serious it's much easier to yeah. to convince certain people that you can go out and spend a lot of money on a bike so i took advantage of that and and i would say that was probably one of the best things i did because i would i would go off and cycle 30 miles and uh, yeah. end up in places i never thought i'd ever cycle to and and that yeah. was that was amazing not only for my physical fitness but for my mental health as well because yeah. your mind would 95% of the time be taken off what you're going through. And I was enjoying the countryside and, you know, concentrating on staying on the bike and, and it was fantastic. And it also enabled me to ride with some of the other prostate peddlers as well. Yeah. Um, I think exercise was one of the most important things um, that I discussed with these support group people. And I made sure that I walked whenever I could, if I could do a hundred meters down the road or, I could do a couple of miles or cycle 30 miles. I'd always do what I could. And I think having that attitude and going for a lot of walks was, I think exercise is one of the the, the, the main things that helped me get through a lot of my treatment because I was fitter and stronger um, mentally and physically. So I think it's that was the most important, one of the most important things I did. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and that's good to hear. I mean, I, something I do push to my patients because for all the reasons you've just said, it's psychologically good for you. It's physically good for you because the hormone therapy is affecting your muscles, your weight and so on. And you'll prevent bad things happening by, by taking control. So it's, 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 it works on so many levels. 
Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, since, you know, you're asking about the effects of chemo on me longer term. I mean, I, I, I've lost weight now, which, yeah. which I'm meant to do. I play yeah. um, a lot of walking football. I'm probably fitter and stronger than I've been yeah. for a long, long time. So, you know, I see that a lot of my treatment has, has led me to becoming more, much more fit. I'm yeah. much more open to, to doing things. Yeah. Um, so yes to things rather than I'll have a think about it. So oh. um, I think that a lot of my treatments, especially the chemo has led me to becoming fitter and, uh, um, and stronger as a, as, as a person mentally and physically, I would say. Yeah, no, that's good. And, and, and yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I think it's really important to do the things you've done. So just finally, is there anything else you want to say about tips for coping with chemotherapy that, I mean, I think you've given loads of really useful tips already, but anything you, you meant to mention that you haven't mentioned? Um, I would say, um, find out, you know, up front, find out as much as you can, um, about the drug that you're having and the potential side effects. I mean, I just definitely wouldn't Google anything because that, that's terrifying. Um, and I, I would, uh, a lot of people said, don't do it, but you, you know, you're sort of tempted. That's not a good idea. Um, try and speak to people. As I've said, I think the really important things I did try and speak to people that have been through it sort of via support groups um that helps um and then i you know i did change my diet a bit i cut out sugar at first and um i just wanted to be as fit as i could while 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 i went through it definitely the exercise thing is a it's a big thing um and quite often it's not as bad as you think it's it's going to be i certainly found that um so yeah you know it's 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 good to talk it's good definitely good to talk to people yeah so, so yeah i think just two things i would add to that as well is that often people get told by the relatives oh you've got to take it easy you're having chemotherapy and i actually say that is literally the last thing you should do you mm. should do exactly what you've done which is concentrate on getting fitter because all the data shows that that will make your side effects more tolerable and, and actually potentially improve survival as well. It's been shown to do that in some trials. So there are really very positive reasons to do it. Um, and then the other thing about internet information, because obviously we're producing something for the internet here, um, <laughs> is that uh, it, it is, of course, very variable. So I actually do encourage my patients to look stuff up online and, and all our materials point to reliable sources mm. like this and like other major cancer charities um as well as good sources of information because there is of course information on the internet that is not reliable or accurate or true or whatever and it, but the information that is there is, is it, that is produced by reputable sources is generally very good and like i hope this will be helpful so you yeah, know there's definitely a lot of good information yeah, out there it's yeah. just if you just do general <laughs> Googling it's oh yeah you'll end up on forums and 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 people are talking about terrible things and but yeah there's a lot of good information out there and and it's it's sort of trying to find out what that is um yeah so yeah, I, think, yeah. I think being guided where to look is something i view as an important part of my job and and actually our materials in the hospital emphasize it brilliant yeah um, so i think that's been i think a really comprehensive discussion actually you've uh, you've brought up all the points i would have wanted you to bring up if you see what okay I mean. yeah, that's that, good. You, you covered all the side effects and all of everything so no that's been brilliant thank you very much no problem my pleasure thank you